Hey guys, what's up? It's 8-Bit Eric. Today we are going to review another Nintendo Switch game. What a surprise. Today we're going to take a look at Psycho's re-released on the Nintendo Switch arcade wacky shooter hit Gunbridge. Yes, Gunbridge. I've never played it before. I missed out on it back in 2001, back when I was in high school. And so much more sexier than I am now. I mean, I'm, a, I'm at least a solid 8, right? After a couple drinks, who knows? But today we're gonna take a look at it. It's recently been re-released in the Nintendo Switch eShop. Is it good? Does it hold up? Let's find out in today's video. Gunbridge is another arcade game recently brought to the Switch, just like Strikers 1945. It was initially developed by Psycho and recently published by Zero Dev Inc. It's an arcade title from 2001 and features gameplay similar to Breakout and Arkanoid. If you haven't played those, basically you control a paddle that tries to break blocks on the screen. Main story of Gunbridge is you're a magician trying to pass magic class in order to become the best wizard you can be. I mean, there's pinballs, blocks, puzzles. You're literally a pinball wizard in this game. Bad joke aside. Control a contraption at the bottom of the screen that has flippers. In order to bounce the ball around the screen and destroy the blocks in order to move on to the next stage. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory. You do have a time limit of about a minute per life. If you die, the timer starts back over. You have a few lives before it's game over for you and you gotta try again. Along the way, you'll encounter different stage obstacles, hazards, and also obtain power-ups. This game has a pretty interesting hybrid feel to it. Sometimes it almost feels exactly like a shooter. It's a very interesting combination of puzzle elements and shooting, and it actually made the game quite enjoyable to play. The ability to tap the A button to send the ball flying off in different directions is pretty useful. The flippers are unique. I don't think I've ever played anything like this. I don't know if there's other games in the series. I know this game was pretty popular in Japan and playing on the Nintendo Switch is my first opportunity to check it out. So I liked it. You know, Breakout and Arkanoid get a little boring after a while. You know, you got your basic power-ups, the basic strategy, but you ain't got no contraption with flippers. You ain't got no wizards. You ain't got no magic. And you ain't got the wacky assortment of enemies that are featured in this game. I mean, take a look at some of these guys. <laughs> freaking creepy boss selections don't let me get started on that after every three levels you feature a boss they're bigger and larger than any enemy you'll encounter and they're actually wackier you'll see like a santa claus teddy bear you have a snowman type of thing all sorts of stuff on the screen and it'll make you pull your ass hairs out the game can get pretty intense and fast at times the stages after level one are where things get shuffled around power ups blocks and everything on the stage can be different each replay. There's about seven worlds. As I mentioned, every level has a time limit where you basically have one minute to complete the level. If you run out of time, you lose a life and you start where you left off. There's unlimited continues in this game, so I guess the replayability is there. If you wanna to try to get a score, the, the high score kind of deducts a little bit of points every time you continue. And maybe the unlimited continues makes things a little bit easier, but you're able to switch things up if you want to get rid of the unlimited continues. If you're a, I guess, a, an official high score aficionado, for me, unlimited continues is plenty. The controls are pretty simple. The left control stick or the D-pad is used to move your pedal left and right. The A button controls the flippers. And there's two characters for you to play in this game. You got a little boy wizard by the name of Gruton. Crouton and a girl wizard by the name of Marion. Marion plays a little bit faster, but Grunton plays a little bit stronger. As you advance, enemies start to have abilities as well that they can perform against you, such as a special attack that causes you to be stunned temporarily. But the power-ups you receive work in your favor, such as slowing down the ball, multi-ball, all sorts of things, even being able to shoot fireballs. So there's a lot of variety here as far as a game goes. In my opinion, Strikers 1945 is basic compared to Gunbridge, and that's awesome. 
There's a load of content on here. I never had a moment in this game where when I died, I was done with it. It was always, let me pick that up and play it one more time. The graphics, very cutesy and cartoony anime style that only a game in Japan can do, especially in the early 2000s. And the music, freaking cute too. The whole presentation of this game is rather nice. I think it's very well done. It doesn't look cheap. And this seems like it would have been something I liked in 2001. But what's really cool with the Switch is that you're able to play the game in the vertical tablet mode. Just like in Strikers 1945. To give it that little mini arcade at home feel. Which is a nice touch that a lot of games are starting to use to their advantage for the Nintendo Switch. You didn't see that adopted in the early versions of some games. But with some of these arcade ports that are coming over, it's starting to become common place and I'm glad that Saikyo decided to do it for Gunbridge. Fucking A plus on that decision. Couple things not included in this game that I really wish would have been there is there's no online leaderboard so you're basically making the high score for whoever plays on your Nintendo Switch at home. An online leaderboard I feel would have been perfect and at home for this game considering that this is a game that is all about getting the best high score you can. This is very fun. I wish that would have been something included. Couldn't expect any online play as far as multiplayer goes, but this is a pretty tasty little game and something that I've never tried before. So with that, you can color me impressed. I think I'm gonna give Gunbridge an eight out of 10. Yes, eight out of 10 seems to be my comfort zone when it comes to grading Nintendo Switch games. But this is a game that even if it was back in 2001 or in 2021, it holds up. It's neat, it has a great little premise, it, it's different as far as most shooters go that I've seen so far on the Nintendo Switch and it's solid. It's very much replayable and it's definitely one that I recommend in your Nintendo Switch library. So go ahead and check it out if you don't mind taking my word on it. And well guys, that's it for today's review. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Helps the channel out immensely. I'll see you next time. Peace out.